the program by estimated data has put out three billion dollars. Is that sustainable at present rates? Nobody knows. Or those who may have run projections have not at this point shared them. With the current, the last data I saw, there are about 250,000 veterans enrolled currently under post 9-11 GI Bill. If that number doubles, then you have half a million veterans using it, which is wonderful, which is a benefit that they have earned by service, but it has to be paid for. So the questions then turn to, is the current model sustainable? If it is not sustainable, what do you bring in to replace it? Or do you prorate portions of it? Do you look at the housing allowance? Do you look at the book stipend? Do you look at the yellow ribbon program match that the VA puts in? You know, these are all areas where potentially someone could look at and say, it's possible we may have to cut things in order to preserve the benefit itself. Meanwhile, you also have the Montgomery GI Bill program running and you have other veterans programs running. So the question also becomes, do you then think about consolidating that, the programs into one total force GI Bill? You know, what do you do with reservists who are not as covered as active duty, but who are being deployed two, three, four, how many times? You know, what issues of equity do you have there? So there's a lot of philosophy and equity questions going forward that have to be counterbalanced with the fiscal reality of what the program costs, and then the moral responsibility of the nation to its veterans. The discussions weave in and out. There's both the pragmatic focuses of, okay, what hasn't been working? What are our lessons learned? What do we need to fix? When can we do this? When can we do the next rollout of the computers? Versus, okay, going forward, what will we be able to spend? And what do we need to do to preserve as much of a benefit for as many veterans as possible, even if it means, you know, maybe online students can't get a stipend for living. Maybe it means the yellow ribbon program has to be reconfigured. Maybe it means something else. And all, nothing is said at this point. The, the focus in this first year has been let's get the students taken care of, let's get it up and running. And then the higher education community, the VA, congressional representatives, other stakeholders on the military and veterans perspectives all will be in a process of putting heads together and saying, okay, what can we do? Because we are really bringing two very different worlds together here with the VA and with the Department of Education world of Title IV financial aid also plays into this and different ways that schools do things versus the way VA does things. One issue came up during implementation where the VA had constructed two separate tuition and fee charts. Well, that's all well and good if you don't live in California where they call tuition fees. So there was suddenly zero tuition eligible and only a small amount of fees. And everybody in California said, excuse me, wait a minute, we call our tuition fees and this isn't fair to our veterans and California has quite a number of veteran students. So issues like that of, of really having the two worlds speak more of a common language and sometimes the higher education community uses words to mean one thing, as any other community does, and the VA uses words, the same words to mean something else, and it's really just a process of getting all these things straightened out. There's a tremendous amount of goodwill in the community on the higher education side. Everybody wants this to work. It's just a question of 
ironing out the kinks and making it work.